here in South Korea. In a press release from his office, Gallego said his bill was a move to show allies that Washington is a committed partner in light of greater uncertainty caused by, quote, President Trump and world events. House vote on the bill is expected soon. Japan once again declares South Korea's Dokdo is its territory. Tokyo also continues to maintain a lot of controversial and wrongful claims over historic disputes with Seoul. Each one explains how such moves are dampening the latest peaceful mood in the region. Japan has thrown a wet blanket over the recent reconciliatory mood springing up in East Asia. In its annual foreign policy document, the Diplomatic Blue Book, it has once again repeated its false claim to South Korea's easternmost Tokdo Island, saying Tokdo is illegally occupied by South Korea. It was a move that was immediately denounced on Tuesday by Seoul's foreign ministry. Our government strongly protests against Japan's diplomatic blue book, having repeated this claim to South Korea's sovereign territory of Tokdo, and it strongly urges Tokyo to immediately drop the claim. The spokesperson says Hull reiterates that the claim is futile and has no impact whatsoever on South Korea's sovereignty over Tokdo, which is justified historically, geographically, and by international law. He also said the claim is unjustified and absurd and warned that it will only hinder the development of Seoul-Tokyo ties. In its blue book, Japan also claimed again that the body of water between Japan and Korea should be called the Sea of Japan, a name it said is the only one confirmed internationally. Seoul's foreign ministry called in the deputy chief of mission at the Japanese embassy, Koichi Mizushima, to lodge a formal complaint. The complaint said in particular that Seoul cannot accept the Sea of Japan label, saying it is rightfully called the East Sea, a name that has been used in Korea for over 2,000 years. In addition to territorial issues, the Japanese document also urged Seoul to implement the so-called Comfort Women Agreement, reached in 2015, which was meant to provide support for the victims of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women. The deal did not take into consideration the opinions of the victims or include an official sincere apology from Japan and has been neglected for months. While Japan's claims are not new, what's notable this year is that there is much more material related to Tokdo and the comfort woman issue compared to last year. It has also deleted a phrase that called South Korea Japan's most important neighbor that shares strategic interests. In doing little to build closer ties with North Korea, the document condemned the regime's nuclear tests and missile launches as severe threats and maintained its hardline stance. Ties between South Korea and Japan seem to be on the mend since their three-way talks with China last week. But observers say Japan's lack of repentance for its past wrongdoings could isolate it further on North Korean issues, especially with even Pyongyang urging Japan to apologize. Lee Ji-won, Arirang News. Meeting with top aides, President Moon Jae-in vowed to crack down on sex crimes. According to a statement from the top office, the liberal leader called for certain punishment for crimes involving hidden cameras, aiding abuse, and domestic violence. Emphasizing such heinous acts are absolutely unacceptable and have no place in modern society, he highlighted the need for change in how authorities and the public view and handle such crimes. President Moon's remarks came at the, in the wake of a recent scandal in which a female model illegally posted online photos of her male colleague posing nude at a local university art class, prompting a police investigation. Staying here in the nation, rival parties finally agreed to get things moving. With Parliament set to resume normal function, the nation's Prime Minister took to the podium to emphasize the importance and urgency of pushing through with the pending supplementary budget bill. Kim mo has the highlights from his administrative policy speech. In order for the support measures on areas prone to restructuring and on youth unemployment to be effective, the National Assembly's approval of the supplementary budget bill is crucial. We ask for you to swiftly pass the bill so that the government can implement it as soon as possible. During his administrative policy speech on Tuesday, Prime Minister Lee Nagyon urged the National Assembly to combine forces so that the supplementary budget bill and other bills related to public welfare can be processed quickly and thoroughly. He stressed the need for the bill, which he calls an emergency budget, to be passed in order to help alleviate the nation's record high unemployment rate. 
The Prime Minister also said that the bill is also essential for boosting the regional economies suffering from restructuring in the shipbuilding and automaking sectors. At the extraordinary session last month, the government submitted a 3.6 billion U.S. dollar extra budget bill, which the parliament agreed on Monday to vote on during a plenary session set for Friday. Aside from the extra budget, the prime minister also said that the government is waiting for the parliament's approval on bills directly related to the lives of the public, such as the revised tax bill and bills on find us particles and public security. He vowed to continue efforts to come up with deep-rooted structural measures to boost innovation in the education, labor, and economic sectors. Kim mok Arirang News. The Democratic Party, the government, and the Chongwade vowed to further cooperate and communicate on solving the nation's economic and political issues. At a closed-door meeting at the PM's official residence today, Chu Miye, the leader of the ruling bloc, pointed out now that parliament is normalized, her party will step up efforts to legislate issues surrounding the supplementary budget and the inter-Korean summit. The presidential chief of staff for policy, Tang ha Sung, expressed gratitude for the agreement made by the rival sides, but added more needs to be done to push ahead with remaining reforms and legislative tasks. Prime Minister Lee nak also pledged to hold further discussions with Pyongyang to push through the agreements reached during the historic meeting and to process the supplementary budget as soon as possible. Korea's foreign exchange deposits saw a sharp drop in April. The nation's central bank points to the strong U.S. dollar and unusually high FX reserves in previous months as the key reasons driving this trend. Kim Hyesung breaks down the digits for us. South Korea's foreign exchange deposits saw the biggest on-month fall in seven months this April. The Bank of Korea said in a statement Tuesday that foreign currency deposits fell by 3.1 billion U.S. dollars on month to 78.2 billion dollars in April. The foreign exchange deposits recorded include those held by Korean citizens, local companies, foreign companies operating in Korea, and foreigners who have lived in the country for more than six months. This is the biggest fall since September 2017 when the deposits tumbled by 3.48 billion dollars. The foreign exchange deposits fell mainly as Korean exporting companies shed their U.S. dollar reserves on the stronger greenback last month. The all-month drop of over $30 billion is not a small figure. But in the past several months, Korea's foreign exchange deposits were unusually high due to the strong Korean won on lower North Korea risk. So in a way, the fall is more like a correction. The South Korean won a weekend against the U.S. dollar average of 1,068 won against the greenback in April, up 4.5 won from a month earlier. According to the central bank, deposits in U.S. dollars shrank by $3.7 billion to $66.3 billion in April, accounting for about 85% of the total foreign exchange bank deposits. Deposits dominated in other foreign currencies, including the Japanese yen, the euro, and Chinese yuan, all inched up slightly. It's Teacher's Day here in Korea. May 15 is when children and adults alike show appreciation to their mentors for their hard work and dedication. The Education Ministry held a special event for a number of teachers invited to the Sejong Convention Center. Students usually present teachers with carnations or other gifts, but this tradition became somewhat of a sensitive subject in 2016 when a new law was enacted related to anti-graph movements. Students are now said to be opting for handwritten letters instead. For the first time in some seven decades, the United Nations Command in South Korea will have a high-ranking post filled by a general from outside of the United States military. Canada's Lieutenant General Wayne D. Iyer has been named second in command at the UNC, becoming the first non-American officer to take that post. According to the Canadian government, the number of officers stationed at the UNC will increase from 6 to 15 as the country looks to actively engage in the multinational forces command. General Wayne said he is looking forward to taking on the challenge as deputy commander and showed support for peace and prosperity on the peninsula. The command's mission is to observe the armistice agreement between the two sides until a peace treaty is formally signed. At last month's historic summit, the leaders of the two Koreas agreed to jointly participate in international sports competitions, including the 2018 Asian Games coming up in August. But there is one problem. They won't be allowed any extra roster spots when unified teams are formed at the upcoming global sporting event. 
Wonder One explains why this is both a welcome and concerning change. The organizing committee for the 2018 Asian Games will only support joint Korean teams if those teams aren't granted any extra roster spots for athletes. Lee ki -hung, head of Korea's Sport and Olympic Committee, confirmed the Olympic Council of Asia's roster decision on Monday. The Asian Games Organizing Committee's decision comes after the joint Korean women's ice hockey team formed for the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic was allowed to add 12 North Korean players to its original roster of 23 South Korean players. Seven sports federations have expressed an interest in forming a joint Korean team with North Korea for the Asian Games. And basketball is one of those seven sports. According to the president of South Korean basketball's governing body, the decision was based on a long history of sporting exchanges between the two Koreas. South Korea has long been in contact with North Korea through basketball. In the early 20th century, there was the Seoul Pyongyang basketball competition, Korea's biggest sporting rivalry. So because we have that traditional background of sporting exchanges, the KBL has agreed to a certain degree to form a combined Korean team. Experts see this as a turning point for basketball itself and, of course, for inter-Korean ties. For the Basketball Association, things like forming a joint team are a chance to boost the sport's popularity. And for the relationship between the two Koreas, it will cultivate the momentum for peace on the Korean Peninsula. But many experts are concerned that North Korean basketball players are a virtually unknown quantity, having not appeared at any international competition since the Guangzhou Asian Games in 2010. And just like the women's joint ice hockey team at the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, a major drawback will be the unfairness to South Korean basketball players who are cut from the roster to make room for the North Korean athletes. The deadline for the athletes' registration for the Asian Games is at the end of June. And at the moment, the Korean Canoe Federation seems the most likely candidate for forming a joint team as it won't come at the expense of any athletes, considering neither South nor North Korea have full-time paddlers for the discipline of Dragon Boat. But the South Korean Olympic Committee is working hard to try and field more than one joint Korean team at the Asian Games. Won Jong-an, Arirang News. Staying in the world of sports, Son Heung Min, the Korean soccer star active in the English Premier League, has been included in a list of Europe's top 100 players, coming in at 97th. Published Monday by the CIES Football Observatory, the Sports Research Center uses an algorithm to rank athletes from Europe's top five football leagues. The Tottenham Hotspur striker was the only Asian to make the cut. This season, Son is ranked 10th in EPL scoring with 12 goals. Europe's overall number one player was, of course, Lionel Messi.